Hey there, fellow time travelers of the musical past. I'm Kevin, host of Retro Renaissance, and today we're diving in headfirst to a tubular time capsule filled with the most bodacious one-hit wonders of the 1980s. So grab your neon leg warmers, tease up that hair, and let's embark on a journey to the land of shoulder pads and unforgettable tunes. You know, it's not many times where a telephone number can be so ingrained in our minds that it's remembered until the end of time. However, kicking things off, we got the legendary 8675309, Jenny by Tommy Two-Tone. I mean, who hasn't dialed that number at least once? And Tommy, my dude, I really hope Jenny eventually picked up that phone. The band was formed in the late 1970s by vocalist Tommy Heath and guitarist Jim Keller. The name Tommy Two-Tone is a combination of Tommy's first name and a play on the word Two-Tone, which was a popular brand of jeans at the time. 8675309 was released in 1981 and became a massive hit, reaching the top five on the Billboard Hot 100. The song's catchy melody and memorable phone number lyrics made it an instant classic of the 1980s and pop culture. How, how did it come about? You know who, who was she? <laughs> so what, you know, I, I've asked you that before. Unfortunately, <laughs> the real story is quite boring. I was oh, just a songwriter thing. You know, I was sitting on this bench under a plum tree in my backyard in Mill Valley, California, and I started playing. It's ten in the morning. You know, so it's time to write a song, and I just came up with this number. I don't know where it came from. The song tells the story of a guy who finds a phone number written on a bathroom wall and becomes infatuated with the mysterious woman named Ginny on the other end of the line. However, despite the success of Ginny, Tommy Two-Tone struggled to replicate that level of commercial success with future songs. The song has remained a staple of classic rock and the 1980s. That's right everybody, the 1980s is technically considered classic rock now. The song continues to be recognized and enjoyed by audiences even decades after its release. And as you might expect, people dialed that phone number endlessly, causing lots of chaos and people having to change their phone number or just ignore the calls. Tommy Two-Tone's legacy largely tied into this one-hit song, but they are still remembered for their contribution to pop rock sound of the early 1980s. Next up we got Quarter Flash's Heart in My Heart, the power ballad that could melt even the toughest mullet wearing hearts. I'm pretty sure listening to this song automatically gives you extra perms. Quarter Flash is a rock band that gained popularity in the early 1980s with their distinctive blend of pop, rock, and new wave elements. The band was formed in Portland, Oregon in 1980 and was fronted by the husband and wife duo of Randy Ross and Marv Ross. We were Seafood Mama. Uh, Marv and I were in that band for about five years in the Portland area. And uh, about the time that the band was getting signed, we were also breaking up. Oh. And, and so we um, changed some personnel and uh, a little bit changed our direction more toward rock and roll and it seemed fitting to change the name. So we changed the name to Quarter Flash. The band's name Quarter Flash is a play on the phrase Quarter Flash and Three Quarters Foolish. Quarter Flash and Three Parts Foolish is an Australian term used to describe new immigrants. It was used to describe people who appeared flashy and urbane but were actually naive. While Heart in My Heart remains Quarter Flash's most recognizable hit, they released several albums throughout the 1980s including Take Another Picture in 1983, Back into Blue in 1985. Despite not achieving the same level of commercial success as their debut, the band continued to tour and record music. Quarter Flash's legacy lies in their contribution to the pop rock scene of the 1980s and their ability to fuse rock with elements of new wave 
creating a sound that was both distinctive and memorable. Next up we have Der Kommissar by After the Fire. I'm convinced that no one really knows what the song's about, except maybe Falco since he released the original just one year earlier in 1981, and this version came out in 1982. But that doesn't matter because it's got that infectious beat that makes you want to dance like nobody's watching. It was sung by After the Fire. After the Fire was a British rock band that emerged in the late 1970s and gained recognition in the early 1980s. The group originally formed in London in 1971 and went through a few lineup changes before settling into its most well-known configuration. The core members include Peter Banks, John Russell, Ivor Twiddell, and Andy Piercy, and this song became a surprise hit in the United States reaching top 5 on the Billboard Hot 100. And what seems like a long time of just listening to Cha Cha Cha, 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 How can you not love it? It does not get more 80s than this. The song's quirky lyrics and danceable beat caught the attention of listeners, making it a staple of 1980s playlists everywhere. Despite the success, After the Fire was unable to replicate the same level of commercial achievement with other releases. The band continued to create music and release several albums after the breakthrough hit, but they never managed to recreate that level of popularity. In the early 1990s, After the Fire decided to disband, and its members pursued various other musical endeavors. While Der Commissar remains their most well-known song and is often associated with the era's new wave movement, the band's brief moment in the spotlight exemplifies the unpredictable nature of the music industry and how a single hit can leave a lasting impact on pop culture. Ready to get your warrior on? Well you better be because Scandal is here with The Warrior. This tune is like a musical power-up guaranteed to give you the confidence to tackle anything, from conquering that Rubik's Cube or just to conquer your Monday morning. Scandal was a rock band that emerged in the early 1980s known for their energetic sound and charismatic front woman. The band was formed in New York City in 1981 by guitarist Zach Smith and bassist Ivan Elias. They were later joined by guitarist Keith Mack, keyboardist Benji King, and drummer Tommy Price, finalizing the band's lineup. However, Scandal's most recognizable member and lead singer was Patti Smythe. Patty's powerful and distinctive vocals became a hallmark of the band's sound. Her ability to convey emotion through her singing was a major factor in Scandal's popularity, and this popularity was boosted more by their music videos, which received heavy rotation on MTV which was a relatively new channel at the time, but their visual style characterized by a blend of edgy fashion and confident stage presence contributed to the appeal among fans. Alright, now how did you meet this lady? Uh, I had gotten her name and I kept calling her and calling her and calling you her. You returned your calls immediately. No, no, no. She doesn't return calls. And uh, I finally got a hold of her at a restaurant. She answered a pay telephone and I said, Now, Patty, I'm never going to speak to you for not returning my phone calls. And she said, Who is this? <laughs> who is this fool? Why Did you have any idea? Him back? Yeah, but I didn't know who he was. You don't return anybody's calls? I do, but nobody would give him my telephone number because he looked sort of sleazy or something, I guess. <laughs> 
Despite their success, Scandal faced some challenges in maintaining their momentum. Internal disagreements and industry pressure led to the lineup changes over the years. Patti Smythe departed from the band to pursue a solo career, which led to Scandal's gradual decline in the late 1980s. Don't You Forget About Me by Simple Minds, the unofficial anthem for all those epic 80s movie montages. If this song doesn't make you want to fist pump while dramatically staring into the distance, then you might need a crash course in 80s awesomeness. Simple Minds is a Scottish rock band that was formed in Glasgow in 1977. The band's lineup has gone through several changes over the years, but the core members throughout much of their career were Jim Kerr and Charlie Burchill. Oh, Charlie and I, as we've probably explained to you before, we've known each other since we're eight years old. And really, the band grew out of, it's really a school band. We're in the same class at school. And here we are, 45 years later, with this new album, Direction of the Heart, still just about getting away with it. They are considered one of the most prominent bands of the new wave and post-punk era, with their music evolving over time to include elements of alternative rock and synth pop. In the early years, Simple Minds Music leaned toward a more experimental and art rock sound. They released several albums that gained them a growing underground following, but their breakthrough came with the release of their fifth studio album called New Gold Dream, 81, 82, 83, 84, in 1982. This album marked a shift from their musical style, incorporating more synthesizers and electronic elements. However, it was their 1985 album, Once Upon a Time, that propelled Simple Minds to international stardom. The album included their most iconic song, Don't You Forget About Me, which was famously featured in the soundtrack of the movie The Breakfast Club. The song became an instant classic and remains closely associated with the 1980s and the concept of teen angst and rebellion. Simple Minds released numerous albums and achieved critical acclaim. While they never replicated the same level of commercial success as Don't You Forget About Me, they maintained a dedicated fan base and continued to tour and create music. Their impact on the music industry is undeniable, with their songs and albums influencing subsequent generations of musicians. Simple Minds' ability to evolve their sound while staying true to their artistic vision is a testament to their enduring legacy in the world of rock music. The Soulful Lament of I Just Died in Your Arms Tonight by Cutting Crew. And let's be real, you haven't truly experienced the 80s until you've passionately belted out this song while gazing longingly into the distant neon sunset. Cutting Crew is a British rock band formed in 1985 by vocalist Nick Van Eed. The band's lineup has seen several changes over the years, but Nick Van Eed has remained a constant presence throughout their history. Cutting Crew! Welcome, welcome in the studio. Well, I, I, Nick van Eden is his name. Nick van Eden, you're Dutch? No, I'm not. My grandfather was, but I'm English. Where he's come from? It, he used to, I think it was Rotterdam. Oh, Sound that in, yeah. Your single, the title of the single? It's called I Just Died in Your Arms. But you're not dead yet. No. <laughs> it's a song about uh, dying in ecstasy. Dying in ecstasy. <sighs> the band's name reportedly came from Van Eed's love of hairdressing and the idea of cutting and crafting songs. The song's music video, which featured a mysterious and visually captivating storyline, also contributed to the popularity. The track reached high positions on the charts around the world, including topping the Billboard Hot 100 in the United States. <laughs> Despite the challenges of maintaining their early momentum, Cutting Crew continued to release their albums in tour. Their music often featured a mix of rock and pop sensibilities, with Van Eed's distinctive vocals remaining a signature element of their sound. The band's impact on the 1980s music is primarily tied to their breakout hit, I Just Died In Your Arms Tonight. 
The song has endured over the years, becoming a nostalgic anthem for the era. Its memorable chorus and emotionally charged lyrics have ensured its place in the pop culture lexicon. So while Cutting Crew may be considered a one-hit wonder, their brief moment in the limelight left a lasting impression. I Just Died in Your Arms remains a testament to the power of a well-crafted song and the ability of music to invoke powerful emotions and memories. Now are you ready to rock, like for real? Cause Kix is in the house with Don't You Close Your Eyes. Kix is an American rock band that was formed in Hagerstown, Maryland in 1977. The band's original lineup consisted of Steve Whiteman, Ronnie Yunkins, Brian Forsyth, Donnie Purnell, and Jimmy Chalfant. Throughout their career, Kix became known for their high energy performances and a mix of hard rock and glam metal music. I also hear they are kid tested and mother approved. Kix, kid tested, mother approved. Their most commercially successful album was Blow My Fuse, released in 1988. The album included the power ballad Don't Close Your Eyes, which reached the top 20 on the Billboard Hot 100. The song's emotional lyrics and melodic quality resonated with listeners and showcased a different side of the band's musical capabilities. Throughout their career, Kix's music embodied the spirit of the times, blending the grit of hard rock with the flash of glam metal. Their music remains a beloved part of the 1980s rock landscape, and their live performances continue to capture the excitement and energy of that era. Kix's story serves as a reminder of the diverse range of bands that contributed to the vibrant rock scene in the 1980s, showcasing the power of music to bring people together and create lasting memories. Ladies and gentlemen, the rock goddesses of Vixen bring us Edge of a Broken Heart. It's like they bottled up the essence of big hair and unleashed it in a sonic explosion of pure, unadulterated 80s energy. Rock on. Vixen was unique as it was an all-female rock band that emerged in the late 1980s. Known for the melodic hard rock sound and powerful performances, the band's lineup has gone through several changes over the years, but the core members during their initial success were Cher Pedersen, Roxy Petrucci, and Janet Gardner. Technically, Vixen was a two-hit wonder. Vixen's breakthrough came in 1988 with the release of their self-titled debut album. The album featured the hit singles Edge of a Broken Heart and Cryin'. both of which showcase the band's ability to deliver powerful hooks and memorable melodies. Edge of a Broken Heart in particular remains one of Vixen's signature tracks, known for its catchy chorus and rock attitude. The band's pioneering role as an all-female rock outfit in the 1980s left a mark on the industry, proving that women could rock just as hard as their male counterparts. What was a keyboard player for Vixen? <laughs> <laughs> People give us a hard time about this. Um, it's a really great friend of ours. His name is Michael Alemania. Uh -huh. And we're very proud of him. He is a guy, but mm -hmm. we're very proud of him. He's great. 
though their time in the limelight was relatively short-lived, Vixen's influence on the rock scene and their contribution to the evolution of female representation in rock music remains important aspects of their legacy. Their songs continue to be celebrated by fans of rock music, especially those who appreciate powerful vocals and memorable guitar-driven melodies. Oh, it's time to groove with Tainted Love by Soft Cell. If this song doesn't make you want to break out your best robot dance moves, then you're probably wearing too many layers of leg warmers. Soft Cell is a British synth pop duo that emerged in the late 1970s and gained prominence in the early 1980s. The duo consisted of vocalist Mark Allman and instrumentalist David Bell. They are widely recognized for their unique blend of electronic music, new wave, and pomp sensibilities. David, welcome to the show. I see you've even brought your own neons along. Now, that's pretty impressive. Yes, sir. These are the neons that we use on stage in our uh, live show. Um, Why are you into neon? Well, it, um, it makes a nice change, really, from having the ordinary sort of stage lights, and they uh, flash on and off, as we can see in the microphone and keyboard oh, yes. motif there. And they've got a nice showbiz, sort of uh, Las Vegas type of feel. I also think Ricky Gervais took his musical cue from Soft Cell. That's right, before Ricky Gervais became Ricky Gervais, he was a singer. Well, he was in a band. <laughs> Tainted Love was a cover song originally recorded by Gloria Jones in 1964. Soft Cell's version gave the song a fresh electronic makeover featuring a catchy synth-driven melody and Mark Allman's distinctive vocals. In 2001, Soft Cell reunited for a tour and eventually released a new album called Cruelty Without Beauty in 2002. The album marked their return to creating music together and showcased their evolving sound. Soft Cell's legacy endures through their pioneering use of electronic music, their memorable hit songs, and their influence on subsequent generations of artists. Tainted Love remains an iconic track that continues to be celebrated and played across a variety of platforms, including films and television, and secures Soft Cell's place in the pantheon of 1980s music. Now prepare to be blinded by science. She blinded me with science. Not only is this song scientifically proven to increase your dance moves per minute, it also might leave you pondering the ethics of performing experiments on synth keyboards. Thomas Dolby, born Thomas Morgan Robertson on October 14, 1958, is an English musician, producer, and innovator known for his contributions to electronic and new wave music. He gained fame for his distinctive style, which combined electronic synthesizers with thought-provoking lyrics, and he played a significant role in shaping the soundscape of the 1980s music scene. However, in 1982, Dolby released his debut album, The Golden Age of Wireless, which included the hit single, She Blinded Me With Science. So I've been a synth fanatic since I was 19 years old. This is me in 1978. And um, my first ever synthesizer I found in a dumpster in South London uh, during a garbage strike in the winter of discontent. And it was this transcendent 2000 that had no keyboard. Um, and my next acquisition was this rather gorgeous vintage Revox tape recorder. And using this and a Boss Doctor rhythm, I was able to ping pong back and forth between the tracks and make my first set of demos. The song's quirky lyrics, catchy melody, and memorable video featuring Dolby in a mad scientist role earned its significant airplay on MTV and radio stations. 
She Blinded Me With Science remains one of the most recognizable tracks and quintessential representation of 1980s new wave music. After achieving success with his music, Dolby turned his focus on technology and academia. He worked in various roles related to technology and sound, including teaching at John Hopkins University's Peabody Institute. While Dolby's music output slowed down over the years, he remained active in various projects including collaborations and live performances. His legacy as a pioneer of electronic music along with his influence on pop culture continues to be celebrated by fans and those who appreciate his unique blend of technology and musical creativity. As we pause our time machine and this blast from the past, let's continue to celebrate those 80s one-hit wonders that continue to bring a smile to our faces and groove to our hips. Remember, it's not about how long you're in the spotlight, it's about how brightly you shine while you're there. Keep on rocking, keep on rolling, and keep that retro spirit alive. This is Kevin from Retro Renaissance. Until next time, signing off until our next righteous adventure down memory lane. Bye, friends.